Today's episode is going to be one of those classic demonstrations. We're going to roll out a piece of pipe combo welding with MIG and flux core. Let's do it. Now we're going to jump right into today's demo. MIG and flux on a rollout wheel. This one isn't an automatic one. This is going to be a hand wheel and it's definitely going to pose some challenges. I think in a lot of places they might start you out on this if you're working on some pipe and you're trying to figure out how to do open root MIG and flux core. It's definitely a lot more forgiving as far as in the 1GR being rolled. Body positioning stays the same. It's a little bit easier because gravity is not affecting us in all different ways. However, you still got to have a little bit more coordination than it looks. And and at first it's a little tricky, but that's what we're gonna do today is go over how I go about welding out one of these. The first thing we wanna look at is this weld bit. I'm looking for a fit up of about 3 16ths of an inch to an eighth of an inch. I got a piece of 1 8 wire here. Now that's the kind of gap that honestly I really enjoy as far as this downhill process. But when we get closer to 5 30 seconds, it's actually kind of pleasant too. It's where we start getting to this tighter 1 8 of an inch gap that makes things a little bit more challenging where our tightest gap is right here. Might have to do some things like opening it up with a grinder and also these bridge tacks are gonna be something new that you may have never seen before. These tacks go across the bevels, don't go into the root of the problem because we're gonna remove them as we go. Get our machine set up and then start putting a root in kind of methodically because we wanna keep this fit up square. Now for today's demo, I'm gonna be running two different machines. I'm gonna be running my ESOB Rebel EMP-285 for my dual shield flux core, and I'm gonna be running this Hurricane 220MTS-C for all the MIG stuff. So we got 035 MIG wire loaded up in here. We've already got our settings as far as our inductance closer into 70. If we want, we can kind of play with that and maybe go a little bit lower because of that open route, but I think we're gonna keep it the same. As far as our voltage, I think 18 is probably gonna be good. We might have to turn things up when we get to those tighter gaps, but we're gonna start with the widest gap and I don't want too hot, otherwise that puddle is gonna fall out on us and you'll understand that when we get started. We've got our machine set up. The gas is 7525. You can run that for both of these as well as close to the same CFH. So really it's gonna be easy. Both these machines will be on and I can just grab and go. Now before we get too crazy, I do wanna explain a few things. You'll notice I've got three tacks on this piece of pipe. The fourth tack I left alone, cause that's where I'm gonna put my first bit of weld. First weld here, all the way close to tack to tack, but we really just wanna put a nice four or five inches in this side. And then we're gonna go to the exact opposite side and remove this tack with our cutoff wheel. Clean up these bevel edges, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then put our second weld in. After those two welds are in, it's pretty much welded and it's not gonna move too much. So we can go ahead and remove this tack up on the other side and this tack. Those two tacks can then be cleaned up. We can adjust our gaps with our grinder and feather our starts and stops with our MIG gun so that we quartered out our root and we make good clean tie-ins everywhere. One other thing you might want to end up doing is putting a little bit of uh, some nozzle spray on your MIG gun. Anytime that you're running MIG, especially with short circuit, I mean, we're gonna be up there, but we're gonna have some spatter going on and you don't want any of those BBs to get stuck into your nozzle and then that nozzle junk just th gets tossed into your weld. Not a good combination. And we could also go ahead and put on a little bit of anti-spatter too. It's not gonna hurt this piece of pipe just to toss a little on. Let's get our hood, let's get ready to weld. All right, let's see what these settings are good enough to go. It's nice to kind of walk this nozzle and you wanna to try to stay to the leading edge of this weld and only work on the downhill section of everything. Got a few inches in there, should be good. As much noise as that was making, we actually put a nice smooth root in there. Just throw on our old trusty cutoff wheel and we're gonna go ahead and cut this out the same shape as the bevel. We might end up leaving a little bit of meat on there, but the most important part is we don't hurt anything as far as inside that bevel, but we do want to reshape it a little bit better than that. I'll kind of go up those bevels in case there's a little bit of a BB or buckshot or something that might hang up my nozzle. But it looks clean enough that we can go ahead and keep welding. Now remember, we're trying to keep everything on the side here. If we start getting towards the top, we might get too heavy. And if we get underneath, we're probably gonna start really sending some wire through there. We want to make it as if it was just a 3G downhill MIG root. I did turn my voltage up to 19 now and my inductance down to 50. I think I got a better bead if I do say so myself. We don't have a land on the pipe. If we put a land on it, we'd be in a bind. My nozzle got hung up right there next to that tack. I didn't remove enough of it. So I just went ahead and stopped. 
I think we got enough weld in it now where we can remove these other tacks and tie in. Just imagine as those first two welds is like two extra long, extra strong tacks, full penetrated. Now we just gotta finish the roof. So we're just gonna cut these guys out just like the first one. Go ahead and cut out the second one. And then we need to feather both sides of these welds so that we can start and stop on them properly. I want a really thin edge and a long taper out. That's gonna ensure for the best fusion. The start of these welds are usually the worst, especially if there's a tight gap. We wanna really open that up if we can. If you end up missing that tie-in, it's a whole lot harder to fix than uh, just feathering it really well. Just for some good measures, I like to jimmy it a little bit. Just get any burrs and then make sure that all those gaps, what's remaining is the gap that I want to weld. We're going to start way up on our already existing weld. Bust through that feathered spot. And just bring it down. Trying to stay to the bottom edge of that, keeping my nozzle walking. If I want less reinforcement, I can come to the top side. Get into this tie-in. I like to try to roll it to the top, and hopefully we got it. Usually if you feather the snot out of it, you'll get it. Let's keep going, finish this root. I want to hear that brow inside that pipe, but I don't want to get that wire poking out. Good as it gets. Here we got the root from the outside. You want to see it really lay really flat in your bevel. If it's really tall in the center, it's not likely you're getting in there. That was where we started for our tie-ins, making sure that it got hot enough by the time we jumped into it and we made us a good tie-in. As far as the inside goes, that's going to be our wider gap there where you see that it's a little bit flatter, still got good reinforcement, and then we're running into our tie-ins. That little guy right there would be suspect to be a cold wire, but I think it's still blended in enough. You can still see our tie-ins right here. That little section looks really nice. There's the tie-in, that's probably our tightest gap. And that's where things can get in a little bit of, you know, trouble. We wanna make sure we break down this wall. Flush is fine for this type of work. Something like that right there, all the way around would be ideal. Now getting set up for the flux core, there's a few things we wanna keep in mind. Flux core is definitely going to be brighter than the MIG that we just ran. So we might have to make some adjustments on our hood and we're gonna make sure our voltage is where we wanna be. Somewhere around 24, 25 should be good for this hot pass. And somewhere in between 250 and 300, probably on our wire feed speed. That should be good. We might could turn it things up and down. The only thing I'm cautious about when I put a, a hot pass with a hot flux core process is that I don't blow a hole in it to make sure I don't put too much wire right onto that root so I don't blow in it. Now with this, we're not gonna end up trying to make it like a quarter at a time. We're gonna get as steady as we can. I'm gonna suck this gun up against my body and I'm gonna work my hand down. And I might do a little bit of oscillation if I can control it. I wanna try to stay in one part of this pipe at a time. And it's gonna be challenging for me because I've got this hand wheel and I don't have a roller that I can actually just set to a certain speed. We can use something like a jack stand and it might end up helping us out there are other methods that you can do as far as getting a gun actually just in an angle, get it clamped down to whatever kind of fixture you got just holding it and then just letting that pipe turn while the flux core just sits right on top. Let's see if we can pull this off. We got a bigger Abbey MIG this time, holds a little bit more duty cycle than the other one. More voltage, more beans to put up with. Get a good stance. Did I turn my gas? I turned my gas off. Gosh darn it. There we go, we got gas now. Stance, tuck, hood, drag angle, roll. Really try not to move at all, except for the wheel. Looks like we're putting in a good bead. I just don't want to get too far ahead of myself or too far behind or too far away. And then you're gonna want to try to put your head in a good spot so that you can see without lifting up your contact tip to work distance too far away. I think we could probably stand to use a little bit more voltage and a little bit more wire. Getting up to our stop. It's usually a good idea to stop prior or if you can, if you have something else holding the gun to chip that slag off the end of your weld. Now all it should need is a good jimmy. I think that looks pretty good to me. We're going to put one fat bead right in it and then we'll do a two bead cap. 
I'm actually going to go considerably slower on this one. That's probably the hardest part with doing stuff like this is you're able to carry a lot of metal, but don't, don't get too crazy. If you carry too much metal, you can end up having problems like trap slag and having that bead roll on you. So we're going to make sure we have the proper voltage. I'm going to go up to about 26 volts and about 350 on the wire now. And we're going to be doing a little side to side. I want to make sure I keep those bevel edges untouched. So that's going to be how I control the speed of my roller. Really boring, honestly. i got no like rhyme or reason to my side to side. I'm really just making sure my puddle fills up to those same edges. Or very close to those same edges. Ready to cap now. The slag should just come right off. And it does. Just give a little scraper rooney Good to make sure you get it off with a good old jimmy wheel. All right, nice and clean, ready to cap. I'm pretty much going to change nothing, guys. The only thing I'm changing is my travel speed, my roller speed. I'm going to move a little bit faster for my cap. I'm going to point to this right side and go ahead and make sure the edge of that puddle tickles that side and covers about three quarters of this groove. Trying to make no motion. Almost forgot to breathe. Trying to stay as still as I could. A trick to that is to maintain a travel speed. And it's really hard to do when you're doing it with a hand wheel. The less wiggling I can do, the better for me. Now you can see on this cap, we're just past flush, like as far as the base metal. When I put the second one in there, we should have a nice little crown in there. Get that arm tuck. Boogie, boogie, boogie. I don't know where I am anymore. Dang it. Almost made it all the way around. Dang. Just make a little tie in. Started getting off route. Kind of left the valley in between there. Probably the best section right there. I felt like I could actually see. Usually right at this point. I like to go ahead and clean the weld. Get all the slag off. And before it cools off too much, I still like to cut it in with a file if I can and then any of my starts are where I finish like right there that button right there I'm gonna blend that in too and same thing with this tie-in that I kind of came off I'm gonna blend that back as well now when it comes to blending stuff like this we want to bump the toes of the weld where it's kind of out and we want to knock down the high spots I'm gonna use this fiber disc this is just gonna take the 3m fiber disc and smooth out anything that looks different or irregular from the rest of it and then once I like that, those are the kind of the rougher looking spots. Again, that classic combo of the fiber disc and then switching over to this Scotch-Brite wheel. Get rid of any BBs. Now that's a shiny weld. Take a final look at this pipe. We want to look and make sure our reinforcement isn't high, too high, but it's also doesn't have any low spots. Like right in there, right in the middle. That could be low. The root pass, I think it even squeezed out a little bit more. If I was trying to put a good root pass in here consistently, I would want to kind of stick to something that's lush-ish because it'll probably push out to be a little bit more. I don't even mind that little guy. Get out of there. Well, y'all, I hope you really appreciated this video. It kind of reminded me of the old production welding days. I used to do this exact same thing for a living, except I definitely had something holding that gun for me. Because if you really want this to look the same every single time, you rig something up to make it easier for you. Check out the links down in our descriptions because those people help us go and do a lot of cool things. Thanks to everybody. We'll see you on the next weld. To an eighth of an inch. Now that's wide to tight. Eighth of an inch is somewhere what I got over here. Now, let me see if I can, oop, that's not good. Let's tighten that. And as far as the root pass go, ooh, so party in there. Just making one bead right up the old butt crack there.